So welcome back. Let's finish up this lesson and review what it is that we've just talked about. We want to pay attention to the important metrics to monitor when it comes to CPU and using ESX Top, right? So what are those things, right? Being able to look at high use values and ready time is important to track your overall CPU performance. However, when you have high CPU usage, that doesn't always necessarily mean that there is an indicator of poor performance. It just means that the server is busy. What you do need to make sure is that there's no VMs having to wait for CPU and the indicator for that is the ready values. So while it may be normal for a server to have 70, 80% you know, CPU utilization because it's got a lot of VMs on there, where it can be a problem is that there's some spikes that are causing contention and causing ready values to jump. Well, then that's what you need to watch out for. So you wanna watch out for those ready indicators, right? So for instance, an example like this, we have some high CPU usage and that's okay unless you have high ready values. And we can see we actually have some. The recommendation is that you don't want to have more than 10% ready values per virtual CPU. Not necessarily per VM, but per virtual CPU. So one thing to remember though, when it comes to looking at all the different metrics that you see with the CPU screen, are there any metrics that can give you an indicator of, say, memory contention, right? Does the CPU screen show you anything other than just CPUs? And yeah, sure enough, swap weight will actually indicate that you probably should be looking at the memory screen because the this is telling us the VM isn't able to get scheduled to a CPU. It's basically being blocked to access CPU until the memory swapping has finished. So we want swap weight to be really low too. We want that to be less than 5%. So to kind of look at this flow chart, just to thinking about how would we be able to diagnose and what should we do when we have a host with CPU saturation? First thing you want to do is measure your host's CPU usage. And you know, if it's averaging 75%, that's okay. But if it's peaking over 90% while it's continually being used at 75%, check to see with the VM who has the highest CPU usage and check to see if he's got any ready values that are also over 10% for each of its different virtual CPUs. Now, if you're using the vSphere client, you can also look at something called CPU readiness, which is also in a percentage, and that is actually the same metric to look for. The book is making note of another chart metric called CPU ready in the charts, which should be confused with CPU ready on ESX top. They are reporting the same thing. They just use completely different units. In the ESX top, it's reporting in percentages. In, in the performance charts, on the other hand, it's showing milliseconds. And so since the charts update every 20 seconds, we want to find out what is 10%, which is two seconds or 2000 milliseconds. And that's where we're getting those numbers from. So if you're using the ready value in the vCenter charts, use 2000 as the benchmark, where if you're using ESX top, we're looking at 10%. So basically you're finding the VM with the high CPU usage, find any VMs who are being impacted by CPU ready, and you basically have CPU saturation at the host level. So what do you do in that situation, right? Resolving host CPU saturation is your classic decision on what to do when you have a performance problem. You basically have a workload that's trying to consume resources of which the workload needs more than what you actually have. So what do you do? Well, you have these two choices, right? You have a workload that's needing to use resources. One option is to reduce the number of uh, VMs running on the host, right? Reduce the, the workload. Or you can increase the resources by throwing hardware at the problem. So a simple approach in vSphere vMotion. vMotion always is the easy solution, right? Find another host for your VMs to run on that has free CPU resources. But maybe you don't have that as an option. Maybe all of your ESIC servers are already CPU saturated. So now what do we need to do? Well, ideally, we could add more hardware to this by increasing the available CPU resources, maybe by adding a new host to your environment. Or maybe toy with that workload a bit, try to increase the efficiency in which the way the VMs use CPU resources. That's probably less common because who's going to be able to tweak their own workload without first consulting the vendor. But another option might be to use resource controls to basically prioritize the different workloads. You may have all the VMs running, but maybe some have higher priority than others. So we can leave them all running, just give a bit more of a percentage of the resources for the more critical workloads. Now, if you have guest saturation, what do we do in that situation? Well, that's actually, again, pretty simple because they're VMs, but it's the same basic thing. You're looking at CPU utilization for the VM. If that's at 75% and it's and it's uh, um, piking, uh, spiking over 90%, well, then maybe the VM needs more CPUs. So that's easy enough. When the VM's a VM, you can just add virtual CPUs, 
to match the workload requirements. Otherwise, you're going to increase the efficiency in which the VM uses the resources, which means you're going to have to tweak the workload. If the VM is actually not using all of its virtual CPUs in a uniform way, why did you give the VM 10 virtual CPUs if it's constantly just using one? Well, that could be a case of the VM is basically running a single threaded application and you granted the VM way more CPUs than the workload called for. There are other cases. Maybe the guest host is configured with a uniprocessor kernel. That's really not something that happens these days. You might have to upgrade if it's an older OS to an, you know, to a, to an SMP based kernel. Um, maybe in the guest, there could be an application that was pinned to a single core in the guest OS. That also I wouldn't think is very common, but if the application was single threaded, it isn't going to be able to use all of its virtual CPUs efficiently at all because of the fact that the application is single threaded. Of course, the guest OS probably is multi-threaded, so you might probably be able to get leverage some of that. But if the app is really just single threaded and you gave the VM 10 virtual CPUs, that's probably more than the VM would need. But you can watch out for that. Right? You can open up and expand the CPU values, uh, the CPU counters on ESX top to see whether or not is the VM actually using all the virtual CPUs that it's been configured for. And finally, what if the guest is using unusually low CPU usage? You're expecting the VM to use CPU and it's not. And you have to verify, well, first of all, is he being prevented from using the CPU because there's contention? That could be one, right? You're looking at ready values, but it could be due to other issues. Maybe there's slow overloaded storage. If you're having high storage response times, you're looking at VM weight. The VM isn't sitting on CPU and waiting for, or sitting in a queue to use the CPU. He's actually waiting on his disk IO. Or maybe there's high response times from external systems. Same thing, you're looking at VM weight here, indicating that the VM is not get, getting itself scheduled because he's waiting on other resources. It could be that the application is pinned to cores in the guest OS. You'd have to check to see whether or not the guest has any of its own CPU affinity settings. You know, again, you're looking to see, is the VM able to use all of its different virtual CPUs? Because again, if the VM is larger than it needs to be, it could have been spending more time in co-stop. And that's what you'll find. If the VM has co-stop numbers that are significant, then that may actually prevent the VM from doing actual CPU work. And that's the last, the next last one, too many configured virtual CPUs that may show up as co-stops. And finally, maybe the VM isn't getting scheduled to the CPU because it actually has hit its own administrative limit. Some admin has set the CPU limit on that VM and the VM is constantly hitting that value. That's going to show up in ESX top as MLMTD, max limited. So the percentage of time the VM wasn't scheduled because he was dealing with its own administrative limit page. So there's just some of these different metrics that you can all see in ESX top, right? You've got the first ones, which are VM weight. Then you've got co-stop for the pinned and the too many configured virtual CPUs. And then you've got MLMTD to report maybe restrictive resource allocations. So what we're gonna do in this exercise is an actual interesting set of a case study here. You've got a Linux VM that's in your compute cluster. And if I remember correctly, actually, no, I think the Linux, yeah, it's in the compute cluster. And the Linux VM is configured with a single virtual CPU. We're gonna run a script in that VM, right? You have to wait for it to boot up and then log into its console, launch a script called start test one. That's going to launch a single threaded instance of MySQL. And you're going to record some performance benchmarks with how that VM is able to do work and how much time is he spending on the CPU. You are going to record some metrics for 30 seconds, and then you're going to shut the VM down, give the VM a second virtual CPU. So now the VM has two virtual CPUs, but it's still going to launch start test one, which is a single threaded application, right? So you're gonna see how does a VM use its extra virtual CPU when it's a single threaded application? Will the VM be able to leverage that extra CPU and do more work? And then you're going to stop that start test one and you're going to run start test two, which is basically two instances of MySQL that with the two virtual CPUs, there should probably be a difference here. So basically what you'll need to do is get everything prepared, right? You're gonna run that single threaded program and start ESX top, record the statistics for that first case, run the single thread program in a dual virtual CPU. So you're gonna shut the VM down, give it a second virtual CPU, boot it back up, and then record the output of start test one. And then finally, after grabbing the statistics for having the 
to a VM with a single thread app will then have it run a two instance of the app in case three and see how this differs from case to case. We'll have you write this information down and what you should expect to find when the VM had single CPU and a single thread, that's case one, the VM should be able to use its CPU pretty efficiently, probably in the 60-70% range. An important metric to monitor is the one at the bottom of that table. It's called OPM. That's not an output of ESX Top. That's actually by launching this script called MySQL. If you watch the output of that script, it's going to show you all kinds of statistics, but one of those is going to say OPM, which stands for Operations Per Minute. That is the script's ability of telling you how much work it's getting done, how many operations per minute. So you're able to measure the application's throughput. When you go to case two, you're going to have two virtual CPUs. You'll find that the CPU usage will probably go down per virtual CPU because of the lack of efficiencies. This is a single threaded app, by the way, right? On a two-way VM. You'll find probably OPMs will probably either stay as they were, as they were when the VM had one virtual CPU, or they might even go down. You'll find that the loss of efficiency has a pretty big impact on the application's ability to do work, which is quite telling, right? This is that case of don't go and give your VM more virtual CPUs than it needs because it may not help them because that's what we're doing here, right? We're giving a VM an extra processor and seeing if it actually can, a, can it actually do more work with that extra processor. And it turns out that it usually can't. It's almost always the operations per minute will typically go down which is quite telling, right? The, the, the VM has more virtual CPUs and yet it's doing less work. Unless you create a multi-instanced application or multi-threaded application, that's our third case. You will go ahead and launch start test two, which is basically two instances of MySQL on two virtual CPUs. Well, now it should be able to increase its throughput quite significantly. So our goal is to be able to monitor and manage all of this output. It's interesting to compare the CPU usage. It typically goes down when you go from case one to case two because the VM is less efficient. And then it will go back up again because it, now it can actually leverage each of the different virtual CPUs on each of the different threads or the different instances of MySQL. And so will be, it will be reflected in the operations per minute. You'll have operations per minute at one point. When you launch uh, case two, they tend to drop, doing less work, even though we have more hardware. And then it should shoot straight up when you have two instances of MySQL, it will be able to use those two virtual CPUs very effectively. So record, you know, perform these uh, tasks, you'll be able to kind of see this as you fill in this table. So in this lesson, we took a look at the, you know, how to identify the key CPU metrics and how to use the metrics inside the ESX top and how to monitor CPU usage. And that ends our module where we took a look at how CPU problems are usually caused by host CPU resources that may not be able to meet the vCPU demand. V high CPU use values with high ready time often indicate uh, CPU uh, performance issues. And for CPU related problems, you should verify whether host saturation and guest saturation exists. And so that ends our module. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next module.